Hi, this is Kingsley. Today we are going to tear down the Redmi Note 10 Pro and look at it from the inside. The Redmi Note series have been my favorite mid-range phones for quite some time now and that is because they offer very much for lesser price compared to other brands out there. So first of all, we are going to take out the SIM tray here. This is the SIM tray that takes two SIM cards and an SD card. Then I'm going to take out the back cover here. What I'm going to do is I use a razor, dip it inside some ethanol and try to create an incision by the side of the device. Any side of the device, it doesn't matter. Once I've created a space and I think it's large enough, I'll use my plastic card and try to find my way inside the device. Ouch! Here we go. I think I've actually cut my finger. So you have to be careful when doing stuff like this else this is part of the hazard that comes with the occupation all right sorry about that let's go ahead so some of you might ask me why do you not use a heat gun to open these devices like others do i think the answer to that is that it's simple physics when plastic comes in contact with heat plastic melts when glass comes in contact with heat glass cannot melt so glass shatters if you put in a lot of heat on the back of this device and then you use something and try to take the glass off, because the glass has um, absorbed a lot of heat, the glass would definitely shatter. Oh, I think my finger is still bleeding here. Just give me a second, let me clean it up. After about 1 minute and 50 seconds, I was able to open the device. And one thing I can say about this device is that it's not just beautiful on the outside. It's quite beautiful on the inside too. The black and the orange color team actually makes it look quite good. And I think I was also right about the ribbon cables that were running from the fingerprint reader. If I had not been careful, I could have cut them off and that would have rendered the fingerprint reader useless. So this is the back glass which you have to be very careful with else you're going to be spending $20 to $25 for an original replacement. There are 17 screws that are holding the plastic frame to the carcass of the device. The screws at the top side of the device are different colors while the ones at the bottom of the device are different colors. The ones at the bottom have this green and lemon theme going on, which is quite beautiful. It makes it easier for the repairer to know where each and every screw came out from the device. Once the screws are off, I can now carefully take off the plastic frame. This plastic frame also serves as the antenna line of the device. As you can see, there are many antenna points here that makes contact with the body of the device that helps it get proper network. There is a graphite sheet here at the top that is meant to keep water out of the device and is also resting on top of the NFC coil. I'll take off the fingerprint reader from the frame of the device here. A closer look at it shows that these things have gotten better over the years this fingerprint reader is so tiny yet very very effective. But this fingerprint reader is not the power button. The way this thing works is that this fingerprint reader only rests on top of the power button. So it gives you the illusion that it's the fingerprint reader that is unlocking the device. But in actual sense, the fingerprint reader is only resting on top of the power button. Whenever you press it, it triggers the power button and also does its own job. Back to the mainframe of the device here, I will unclip the main sensor here, which Xiaomi claims is a 108 megapixel. It's not actually a 108 megapixel sensor. It uses what is called pixel binning technology to create four images and merge them to one, which creates a 108 megapixel image for you. Next up, I will unclip the 8 megapixel ultra wide angle lens with 118 degrees field of view. The lens looks quite small, but it actually performs well and the results are actually not bad. Next up, I will unclip the 2 megapixel depth sensor. This sensor is quite small, so what happens is that most of the pictures it takes are cleaned up by the software of the device and then presented to you. Next up, we will unclip the 16 megapixel front facing camera. This lens is also quite tiny for a 16 megapixel 
it still uses the pixel binning technology. But one thing you need to know about these mid-range phones is that 50 to 60% of the job of these cameras is done in the software of the phone. That's why these cameras are quite tiny, but they can actually deliver much. Next up, I'm going to unclip the ribbon flex cable that connects the sub board to the main board of the device, then carefully try to lift off the board of the frame of the device. One thing that is associated with Redmi devices is beauty. You can actually see the attention to details and colors both from the outside of the device to the inside of the device. The board is actually black with some orange accents going on here and there. And this is quite beautiful. Underneath these chambers lies the Snapdragon 730G chipset and I'm going to try to show it off to you. So here's a look at that Snapdragon 730G chipset. What I have noticed is that the Snapdragon 730G is actually a little bit larger than the Snapdragon 720G at least from other devices that we've looked at. If you've not seen the teardown of the Galaxy A72, you can check the link in the description or up here in the YouTube card. Check out the Snapdragon 720G on that device and then come back here to look at the Snapdragon 730G, you'll actually see that the Snapdragon 730G is a little bit larger. Next up, we're going to take out the battery. Now, I must tell you that the engineers or the design team at Redmi are very friendly guys. They added pull tabs to enable me to remove the batteries very easily. Removing the battery of a Samsung phone actually takes me like 600 years. But with the Redmi, I can actually pull out the batteries quite easily. So this is the 5020mAh battery. This is the same kind of battery that was used in the Redmi Note 9 last year. It's actually no different. Next up, I'll unclip this ribbon cable that connects the sub board of the device to the main board. This is the main speaker of the device. As you can see, there's a little piece of foam in here. It serves as a water damage indicator and also to keep dust out of the device. And there's also this graphite sheet that rests on top of the speaker. It's meant to keep water out of the device in case there is a penetration. If you were to break the screen of your phone, this is what an original replacement would look like. It will come in this entire frame with most of the accessories already built in. Something I want to correct here is, when this device came out, a lot of reviewers, including myself, actually said that this device had a dedicated speaker on top of the device. After looking at this phone from the inside, you will agree with me that this is not true. The Redmi Note 10 Pro uses the earpiece as the second speaker. The reason why it sounds better is because of the design. They actually created um, an open space up which is wider than what most other devices will create. So it makes the speaker to sound better and give more output. It doesn't have a dedicated second speaker at the top. Go ahead and subscribe, follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at Tech Overwatch and I will be giving you guys behind the scenes of how I record most of these teardown videos, alright? If you have a question, I would love to hear it down in the comment section, alright? And also, don't forget to subscribe, it will help out the channel a lot.